Welcome to this module on genome editing. Today we will be discussing genome editing using the CRISPR-Cas system. The CRISPR-Cas system, which represents a bacterial immune system, has been engineered to uh, de develop or define genomics in terms of genetic engineering of eukaryotic genomes. CRISPR, which is the clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats system, is now being utilized widely as a genome editing tool. It offers the advantage of precision as well as accuracy. This is a schematic representation of the elements of the CRISPR-Cas system. The key element is the enzyme Cas9, which is a programmable endonuclease. The second element is the tracer RNA. The third element is the crRNA. These together combine to target the DNA sequence, which is programmed in the crRNA. Today's objectives are to introduce you to the concept of innate immunity in microbes, to introduce you to the concepts of the Cas enzyme, and to reinforce the concept of genome editing using the CRISPR-Cas system by designing a genome editing experiment for gene deletion. Upon completion of this module, you should demonstrate the ability to describe the role of the CRISPR-Cas system in innate immunity, describe the process of engineering the Cas enzyme for application as a genome editing tool, and design an experiment to engineer the genome using the CRISPR-Cas system. Let us look back upon the principle of the Cas system as represented in bacterial genomes. So how does bacterial immune function work? When a foreign DNA invades a bacterial cell, it is digested by the enzyme Cas1. Fragments of the foreign DNA are then introduced into the CRISPR sites via recombination. When the bacterial cell is invaded by a similar DNA molecule, such as a phage DNA, the bacterial cell responds by transcribing the CRISPR array. The RNA transcript is processed by restriction at the CRISPR spacer elements. The individual RNA fragments, termed as crRNA, combine with tracer RNA by base pairing. And the complex finally binds to enzyme Cas9. This complex in turn, binds the DNA adjacent to a protospacer adjacent motif and ensures its cleavage and degradation. Let us look at the steps graphically. The first step involves invasion and digestion by the Cas1 enzyme. In this case, the DNA is the phage DNA, and the red dots represent the enzyme Cas1. At the end of this process, short DNA fragments are obtained. The second step involves recombination or insertion of the short DNA fragments into the genome at the CRISPR array. Upon invasion by DNA from the phage, the enzyme Cas2 will transcribe this entire RNA strand. So Cas2 is like a polymerase. It will polymerize the transcription of the RNA strand. In the fourth step, the RNA transcripts are cleaved by the enzyme Cas2 into individual RNA molecules. These RNA fragments are then bound to crRNA and the tracer RNA. So in this graphic, you can see the crRNA, which is the transcript indicated in red, binding to the tracer RNA, which is a fixed element. This complex will then go into the next step, which is binding to the Cas9 enzyme. Both these strands together bind to the Cas9 enzyme. As you can see, the binding between the tracer RNA and the CR RNA is based on Watson-Crick base pairing. The next step involves targeted binding to the DNA site. So in this case, the DNA is the phage DNA, and the Cas9 enzyme specifically seeks out a protospacer adjacent motif or PAM site. 
This spam site is unique to the Cas9 enzyme and it's used by Cas9 recognition system to identify the DNA fragment which needs to be cut. When you engineer DNA, you should take note that a PAM9 spam site exists adjacent to the DNA which you intend to cut. Finally, targeted DNA degradation, which is catalyzed by the enzyme Cas9, facilitates the degradation of the foreign DNA and results in protection of the host. This ends module one. We will now conclude this module and please complete your evaluation, which is located at the end of this module. Thank you for watching.